Greetings, citizens of Nerdropolis. Sean Taj here, the mayor of Nerdropolis, and my guest today is the star of the hit series, The Boys, Aaron Moriarty. Hey, Aaron. Hi. It's great to chat with you today. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, likewise. So before discussing your film, Catching Dust, uh, premiering at Tribeca Film Festival, mm -hmm. how was your Comic Palooza experience a couple of weeks ago? That's um, where I'm at in Houston. So how was your experience? Oh, really? Yeah, it was amazing. It was really fun. I just, um, the people were lovely and I wish I had more of a chance to explore Houston, but I got to really connect with people from Houston and people who traveled in. And that's just like, it, it's just a lovely experience to meet people firsthand because you don't often... You're not able to have that kind of relationship with, you know, fans of whatever show you're on. And it just it just was really cool to meet them firsthand. It always is. But the people in Houston were lovely. Yeah, you have quite the crowds when I was out there covering it. And um, I know everyone loves you. Everyone was excited when they heard you were coming to Comic Palooza. Yeah. So hopefully that won't be your first and last time in Houston. So hopefully you come back to Texas. I hope so. Yeah, I would love to come back. And do you have something that you love about Texas when you come out here? Food. That, that's what I would say I was able to experience because you're working during the day, but you still have the opportunity to go out at night. And I would say the barbecue and the food is incredible. So I just need to come back and have more food and extend my trip so I can explore during the day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We have a lot to offer out here. You know, overall, yeah. Texas does too. And speaking of Texas, your film Catching Dust takes place mm -hmm. at Big Bend. Mm -hmm. um, I was glued to the screen the whole time. It's a captivating film and such a unique setting. Where exactly did y'all film this movie? We actually shot the film um, on, a, it, on a small island in the Canary Islands in Spain called Fuerte Ventura. So when I, when I heard that we were filming there and obviously I knew where the film took place, I was so intrigued to see how that would work. And then obviously within 24 hours of arriving in Spain in on this specific island, the, rec, the director took us to where we'd be filming. And I mean, it made, it made perfect sense to me, but it was just so interesting and surprising that they were able to find a climate like Big Bend in such a far away place. Yeah, and it looked really cool on screen. Like you're filming in Spain, but you're you're showing Texas. And I know, mm -hmm. like you know, the sets are small, but you're showing a vast landscape, which mm -hmm. is really cool to have that setting. What attracted mm -hmm. you most about this movie? Um, what attracted me most was first and foremost the character because I just I was very attracted to the the trajectory of Gina's character and the point at which we meet her and this period of time where the movie takes place when she becomes a bit more self-aware of her circumstances and she sort of wakes up and she she simply is unable to suppress her needs, desires, wants anymore. Um, and I don't think she's been aware of how much she's suppressing them. And just in perfect timing, this couple arrives and expands her perspective on how anyone could live and what a woman's role could be in society. And I think, I think it's just that, that age in a woman's life where whether they are have been raised in extreme circumstances like Gina and they're not, and she is now very isolated and she needs to sort of figure out however she can liberate herself from so many suppressing factors or you know any woman around that age who is trying to figure out their identity without the presence of any suppressing factors because no i feel like no matter what those factors exist now whether they're they're societal whether they're they manifest in your husband whether they're a combination of both and while i'm very fortunate and i was raised in an environment that was more conducive to fem feminism than gina I think that there are parallels that most women will be able to connect to, unfortunately, unfortunately. 
in terms of what Gina goes through in the film. Jai Courtney plays your husband in this movie and he's unrecognizable. He pulls off a beard pretty darn well. Yeah. How did y'all prepare for this movie other than kind of getting down the Texas lingo and stuff like that? And how was your, like your experience working with him and what did he bring to the film? Well, um, it was, it, so first of all, um, we met in Los Angeles before we flew out to Spain. So we met pretty far in advance and it was, um, I was immediately aware that he was going to be such a fun person to collaborate with because, you know, he's such a, he's such a sweet guy and he's so encouraging and warm. And I just felt like he, he just has this palpable energy about him that feels like, feels very safe. And that's so important when it comes to playing a role that has to experience so many emotions. You can't be thinking about you can't be thinking about the other actor. You need to be thinking about the other character. You need to be staying present, right? And so when we showed up in Spain, we showed up early so we could work with the director and we could um, sort of rehearse and also go over things and go over details that we felt could just make the film and these and this relationship all the more dimensional. And um, it was just weirdly because the circumstances of the film are really dramatic and and of the and the circumstances of this relationship are very turbulent but it was it was really fun because it's really liberating to have a scene partner who just is there for you when you want to take risks when you want to do they're just he was just there and that was reciprocated and we knew that and so and so that just left so much room to play and um it was such a great experience and and we went about preparation very differently you know i i definitely relied in the in the prep and he is so present and so he pulled me into the present um and yeah it was just it was really ideal because you cannot open up a vein for a character unless you feel totally safe with the other actor and he made me feel that way yeah i actually really loved watching y'all together i would like to see another project with the both of y'all working together that, that would be so yeah easy yes yeah y'all and y'all have both played kind of superheroes so it's kind of fun to see mm -hmm. <laughs> two of those yeah. on screen <laughs> yeah how i started to show this film uh in your hometown yeah that's always amazing because you know um there are people in my hometown, like my dad, for example, that were very integral when it came to me pursuing acting in the first place. So there is, you know, there's a massive part of me that wants to be able to come back to New York City and go to a film festival like this and be able to say, you know, hey, you're witnessing this firsthand and this is largely thanks to you. And so it's sort of like a, a moment of a moment to express gratitude for certain people that were very, very supportive. Um, and that's just, and that's just really cool. It's really, um, yeah, it's poignant for my family. So it's just, it's really fun. No, I love that. I kind of can relate. You know, when I do these interviews, I show my parents and they let me do pursue what I love. And so they love yeah. every interview I do. And they're, you know, they're very encouraging and stuff That's like that. So, so I, so I definitely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. We're lucky. We're very lucky. Yeah. And growing up, what type of films did you love? Um, you know, my dad, it's funny because my, so, so my parents, um, separated when I was two. So I was with my dad and my mom, both, um, individually. And I had an amazing relationship with both parents and my dad, his way of, he just, from a young age, exposed me to a lot of films. And I think he was, I don't think I know, he was very mindful of what he showed me to make sure that in these films, whatever I watched, there were women depicted in, in positions of power or depicted in a light that, that, that felt, um, like these characters would be a positive impact on me. And he was very empowering of me. And he knew eventually that we shared this mutual interest. So I think he went about it very mindfully and took that as an opportunity. And so that was just very cool that that really stemmed from my dad. 
Um, and that he was, it made me realize how impactful watch sitting down to watch a movie or a TV show can be. And he just made sure that he was extremely mindful with these choices, with his choices and that I was exposed to a plethora of female roles that were really strong and badass and complicated. And that sort of, you know, shaped my perspective on how a woman could be in the world, but also I think it made me want to pursue acting because it made such a positive impact on me. Yeah. Do you know the moment that kind of clicked that you wanted to pursue this? Um, I think, I think it was just, you know, uh, I think I was very encouraged to pursue certain hobbies and so I tried, especially in New York City, you're, you, I had access to so many different things, whether it was figure skating or, or horseback riding in New York City, funnily enough, or um, painting class. And I think it was just, I remember acting was the first thing that I think I took initiative in terms of being drawn to it. And something about it fascinated me. and. I remember the first time I properly auditioned for something. It was a musical theater play and I booked the role and I had never felt such satisfaction. And it felt very surreal to know that something that intrigued me so much could be something that I could turn into a career. And so I felt like I, I had to. But that's the kind of thing that when growing up in New York, you're able to do. So I was felt very, I feel now very grateful to have been encouraged to do that and to have grown up specifically in New York City where there were actors around me because that doesn't exist everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity up there in New York. And it's great to hear that you love movies growing up. I know you grew up kind of loving Studio Ghibli movies. Yes. Do you have a so top three? Do you have a top three favorite? Studio Ghibli movies? Yeah. So it's funny. I, my dad was the one who exposed me to all of these. And, and I just thought they were so beautiful. I spirited away. I feel like is number one. Princess Mononoke is number two. Number three. That's hard. I know what That's your three hard. is. I you know, know what you mentioned it Yeah, it's Kiki's Delivery Service, isn't it? I love that film. I love it. I'm surprised that it wasn't the first it. one because I love that. <laughs> That's a good really? one. Really? I love Kiki. Yeah. I don't know why, but spirited away. And Princess Mononoke, I just, for whatever reasons, their visuals, I just loved them. And they had a bit of a dark edge to them. So maybe that was why, I don't know. But I, but, but I loved Kiki's Delivery Service as well. That's probably my all-time favorite. I try to introduce everyone to okay. that. It's just a great movie for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, we got season four of The Boys coming up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon. Can you tell us anything about the upcoming season or when we can expect it? You know, I, I genuinely don't even know when we can expect it. So it's not even like I know and I'm, and I'm keeping it to myself and I've been sworn to secrecy. Um, but season four is complete, which is a very good thing. That means that um, it takes a long, it, it takes a long time to film. And so if we're done with it and we've wrapped it, they're in the process of editing and, and um, it's only a matter of time. But I would just say that, we have, you know, you have to keep in mind that anything can happen in that world. And even knowing that your imagination could not possibly uh, go far enough or I don't know, go crazy enough to, to imagine a fraction of what happens in season four somehow we outdo ourselves each season and i just definitely had my jaw on the floor i would say a hundred times season four with like multiple 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 times and i have not had my i've not had that many moments in previous seasons so it's just like it's I'm, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I'm, I'm sort of at a loss for words, but I think that speaks for itself. 
Yeah, that's good enough for me. I love that. And <laughs> I love that. And lastly, did you ever think the boys would stick the landing and become the sensation that it is? No, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it also is my conditioning as an actor to just put, is to just put the work in and sort of um, take my hands off the wheel when it comes to audience reception, because, because that's just, that's just, um, it's, it's a conditioned mindset to, to make sure that I'm never, the process and the experience is never determined by the outcome, but the experience itself, right? So I did the work, I let it go. And I think because we had such a good time, I tried to not be married to the outcome because that specific show involved so many friendships and it involved such a, such a protective and possessive and um, infatuation, infatuation with that role that I play that I didn't want to become too attached to it almost. Do you know what I mean? There's an emotional attachment that. And so when it did well, it was just, it was honestly just, it was a relief and it was very, obviously it was gratifying, but it was so nice to just be encouraged to keep going because I was so in love with that role and the people in the show that I was allowed to, to, foster my emotional attachment a little bit more. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. I love it. Everyone loves it. And congratulations on all the success. You're just getting Thank started, you. I feel like. So I'm looking forward to what the career of yours is going gonna to showcase for us. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Metropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.